Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to a week of slow cooker meals. Today I'm going to show you seven more delicious recipes that you can easily make in your slow cooker because you seem to love the last video that I made like this. And today we're focusing on summer recipes because I think when you normally think of a slow cooker meal, it's very warming and comforting and perfect for autumn and winter. But today I wanted to show you some amazing recipes that are perfect for summer if you're having a barbecue or you're entertaining or you wanted to have some something on the side. These recipes are going to be perfect for that and I don't want to sound big headed but there are some really really good ones in this video so I'll be sure to link them in the description down below so if you do want to remake them please go ahead and follow those links and I will use timestamps as well so you can easily flip through all of the meals. But if you're new to my channel then my name's Emily and I post three different videos a week on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday and there is so much foodie content as well so if you do like this video please consider subscribing for more like this and with all that said let's get into the recipes okay so first off I'm going to be showing you how to make slow cooker honey and mustard chicken thighs this one is so delicious and it's very simple to make you can also make it go a long way and I love using chicken thighs in the slow cooker because they're very tender they're very juicy they're a bit cheaper to buy there's just loads of flavor so this is everything you're gonna need as I said I will link the full recipe in the description so you can check it out uh, but the method is you put a little bit of butter into a frying pan or if you have a slow cooker that has a frying pan setting you can do that as well that's what I've got um, and then once it's all melted you just put in your chicken thighs this recipe calls for eight chicken thighs but I had six but as you can see you can make it bigger and you can make it last for more nights if you want to so now just seasoning with salt and pepper actually these are Matt's hands Matt did this one <laughs> um, and you just want to brown the chicken thighs and the spring onion and then once that's done you want to add in the rest of the ingredients so there was chicken stock some mustard I think it was Dijon mustard and some honey as well and that is literally it for this point point. and then you put the slow cooker on low for four hours I believe normally with chicken I put it on high but because it has been browned I think you do this one on low and then you do that for four hours and then about 15 minutes towards the end you just add in a little bit of cream cream or sour cream and then some peas as well so just have that in for 15 minutes and then all the peas cook and it's like a nice creamy sauce and it's literally that simple it's all done so it's nice it's only four hours so you could put this on at lunchtime or in the afternoon and have it for dinner we served it with a little potatoes and some vegetables but as it's like a summer one you could have it with salad if you wanted to um, and yes just really delicious very sweet so the kids really liked it this one is really one to try it was so Moorish that we had seconds and it's a prawn and chorizo paella and we made this with risotto rice but the recipe did call for orzo pasta so you can make it either way and I've laid out all the ingredients here which makes it look very daunting but it's honestly one of the easiest ones to do you pretty much chuck everything in and it only takes about two and a half hours in your slow cooker so first off I'm just putting in some olive oil and some finely chopped onions into the slow cooker and in a lot of slow cooker recipes you have to brown the onions but in this one you don't you literally just chuck it in so that's nice and then I've also put in some chopped up chorizo some cherry tomatoes some chopped up celery about a small glass of white wine and don't worry if you are giving this to the kids the alcohol will cook off of the wine um, during the cooking process and then also some vegetable stock or some chicken stock and then you put it on high for about two hours and then after those two hours you then add your risotto rice or orzo as I said and also the prawns that was it the raw prawns so just put that in for about 25 minutes check the risotto rice because I felt like ours wasn't really done until 30 to 40 minutes um, and that is it because it's been like cooking there for like a two and a half hours like all the flavors work so well together it's very salty because of the chorizo it's just got a lovely sauce and it was really delicious Jackson really liked this one but he loves rice dishes and yeah I would totally recommend it and we got a couple of nights out of this one as well and we're just serving it with a wedge of 
of lemon and some chopped up parsley as well. And what about sloppy joes in the slow cooker? This is such a good one and it's a very like North American dish. I never really hear sloppy joes in the UK, but it basically just means a loose meat sandwich. And this one is with pulled pork and a delicious marinade. So these are all the ingredients that you're gonna need for it, but I'll talk you through it quickly. And I'm sorry to any veggies or vegans watching this one. Um, if you wanna fast forward to the curry, that is vegan. <laughs> so um, I know you might not wanna watch this bit, but you basically, with the pork, you just take off the rind. So just remove all of the fat. I know a little bit of fat is good, but there was a lot on this joint. And then just roughly chop it up into about four pieces and then you marinate it. So just really simply with some oregano or oregano, however you want to say it. Um, and then also some paprika. I just smoked paprika and then also a little bit of salt and pepper. And then you kind of want to like rub um, that marinade into the meat, flip it over as well, do the other side. Um, this bit makes me giggle a little bit because I know Matt hates touching food and touching meat but he did it um, so anyway that's the marinade and then you could leave this if you were super organized you could leave this in the fridge overnight to really like get all the flavors but we left it for like 15 20 minutes and it was very delicious so you don't have to marinate it for a long time if you don't want to um, and then you make the sauce so the sauce is basically made up of some tomato passata and some ketchup and some Worcestershire sauce that I can't say also a little bit of cider vinegar and some soft um, brown sugar and some chipotle paste. I feel like that's like the secret ingredient. And then you just mix up all of that sauce and basically just chuck all of that into the slow cooker. Yeah, so the recipe called for making a bed of finely chopped red onion and then laying the marinated meat on top of that then adding the sauce on top and that is pretty much it. So then you just cook it on high for five hours and because it is so cooked for so long, like when you do take the meat out, um, it just falls apart. You just use like a couple of forks to kind of pull it all apart and you have this delicious pulled pork, which we had as sloppy joes. So we served it on brioche buns and then the recipe called to make like an avocado mash to go in it as well. So that was really nice. It's just mashed avocado and a little bit of lime. We also added cheese uh, and then we served it with a side salad and this was very delicious. Again, this went a long way. This fed us for two days. We've basically been filming this video for the past two weeks because a lot of the meals lasted us more than one day, which is great. You know I love to batch cook. Um, so yeah, I would totally recommend this one. It'd be great for entertaining or as I said, at a barbecue. And next up, we have some slow cooked chicken chicken tacos. These again, very nice. I really like them and they're a family friendly one. If your kids like wraps, um, then they might like fajitas or tacos like this. We had this on Taco Tuesday. So there's everything beautifully laid out, but again, super simple. What you do is chuck some chicken breasts into the slow cooker. And this one, you can either cook on low for six to seven hours or on high for three to four. So you can decide how much time you have. Um, and we're just putting in a a little bit of water and also some taco seasoning, just the one that you can buy in the store. We just bought one um, in our supermarket. Just chuck in the taco seasoning and then you also put in some ranch dressing or you can put ranch seasoning as well, but we've actually used the Pizza Express salad dressing that you can get. Uh, we just really like that one and it's, it's like a very ranch dressing. Um, so just put some of that in. Again, I'll link the recipe down below and that is literally it. It, just put the lid on. As I said, cook it on low for six, seven hours if you have the time. This would be a good one. When I was working in an office, it was really nice to put the slow cooker on before I left for work and then come home to a beautiful smelling house. Dinner is ready to go. And then all you have to do is shred the chicken. A really good hack is actually to shred chicken with your like whisker. I've seen that on TikTok and I've tried it before and it's actually works so, so well. Um, but yeah, shred the the chicken and then just get all of the other things that you want in your tacos. Um, the recipe called to actually put the shredded chicken back into the sauce um, so that when you're actually putting together the taco, like it's got all of the sauce on it and the flavoring, and then you just get your wraps or tortillas as you normally would 
put the chicken in and then add anything else that you would like. Um, we had chopped up avocado, we had more ranch dressing, but you could add salsa if you want, a bit of iceberg lettuce, um, some shredded cabbage, some tomatoes, some salsa, some cheese, literally whatever you have. Um, and yeah, as I said, really good one. We had a couple of these and the kids really enjoyed it. So that's always a win. And next up, I wanted to show you how to make slow cooked baked potatoes. I showed these briefly in my party hacks video, but I wanted to include them in this because they're perfect for summer to have on the side at a barbecue or if you're having friends over. That's why we made them. And very simple, just buy some baked potatoes, give them a wash, and then I've laid out some tin foil for each potato. And then I'm just adding on a tiny bit of oil and then some salt and pepper or any seasoning that you want. And then you just want to poke the potatoes with a fork, like as you would if you were cooking it in a microwave or an oven. Um, and then I've just rubbed in all the oil and seasoning and made these little tin foil parcels. And that is literally it. You just then put these into the slow cooker and you wanna cook it on high for five hours. And then after that point, you can just check them just by cutting one open. And it's that simple. So I had a lot of questions. The last time I showed these, a lot of people asked, but is the skin crazy? crispy and it's not because it's been in the slow cooker but what we did was just fluff them up and then serve it with any toppings that you want I was thinking you could actually make such a cute um, like baked potato station with this so you could have like chili you could have cheese we've got sour cream and chives we've got like bacon bits um, you could have lots of different toppings and then serve it like that if you're having friends over and it was great and next up, I wanted to show you a chickpea and squash coconut curry. So this is the vegetarian meal that I was telling you about. It may actually also be vegan. Let's see as we go through. I think it is. Um, but here's everything laid out. And first off, you want to put some onion into your food processor with some chili, some ginger, and also some garlic. And I don't think you actually need to pre-chop it like we did. You could probably just stick it all in and blitz it into a paste. And we're using garlic paste for this as well uh, but once you have that you can then put that into your slow cooker we put it on the frying pan um, setting for this to start with just to like release all of the flavors um, and you can actually make this recipe on your hob it takes 30 minutes on the hob or three hours in your slow cooker so once the paste is kind of like been heated on the pan for a little bit then you can add your spice it's turmeric coriander cumin and garam masala once you've added in the spice then you can chuck in your drained chickpeas and also your chopped up squash we used about half a chopped up squash and then we're also adding in a can of coconut milk and then also the vegetable stock as well. And that is it for this stage. Give it a stir, stick the lid on, and then we cooked it, as I said, for three hours on high. And then all that's left to do is towards the end of it being ready, you can chuck in some baby spinach, about 150 grams. Obviously this is great to add like extra nutrients, but it does actually put my kids off. So they didn't massively want to eat this meal, um, but it was very delicious. But if you didn't want to make the paste yourself or get all the spices, I'm going to level with you. You could totally buy one of those pre-made like curry pastes and the coconut milk and chuck it all in with chickpeas and squash. I think that would still be really nice. Um, and yeah, we served it on brown rice and we served it with some naan bread and it was very delicious. And the last recipe that I wanted to share with you is stuffed meatballs and they're stuffed with mozzarella. This is very delicious, but it's also quite a healthy one because we used turkey mince rather than beef mince to make this. So I'll link the recipe down below if you wanna check it out, uh, but it's quite simple. First off, you mix together the turkey mince and breadcrumbs you also put in an egg and half an onion that has been finely chopped and you'll want to season it with like a good amount of salt and pepper and then mix that together really well um, then you just go about making some little meatballs and push in a little bit of chopped up mozzarella into the center of each meatball 
this is like the nice surprise that is so delicious. And then once you have compiled all of your meatballs, you just kind of roll them on a plate that has flour on top of it. And then you'll want to brown that. So again, you can either do that on a frying pan or if you do have the frying pan setting on your slow cooker, I'm using that. When I should say the recipe that I followed also said to put some onions into the frying pan to saute when you're browning the meatballs. Um, so just go ahead and brown the meatballs as best you can but don't worry if it's not cooked all the way through because when it is on the slow cooker setting of course they will cook so once that's all browned then you just add in a little bit of vegetable stock or chicken stock and then also some chopped tomatoes and some oregano or oregano and that is it and then you just put the lid on you cook it on low for six hours or you can do it on high for four hours and then we served it on spaghetti with some garlic bread so this is a nice one again you can just put on and then once the kids come home from school and everyone's going crazy like dinner's already done you don't have to worry about that you can help with homework and you can do all of those other things. So you don't have to serve it on pasta. You could serve it with something else or like the meatballs could be the main part of the dinner and then you could have like rice on the side, whatever you want. But this really is the type of food that I love. Matt was not as impressed with these. He was like, oh, a lot of effort for like these. Um, but I really liked them. So again, I'm sure you could pre-buy meatballs and make them in your slow cooker if you wanted to. Um, you could absolutely do that and make your life easier. But I just wanted to share this recipe with you. And again, I'll link it down below. Right, so that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.